<laughs> Hello everyone, it's Simon from Simon's Discoveries. Uh, today I thought I would make a little video on something that, where I don't really have to do anything because I hurt my hand a little and uh, that makes me useless with most things. So the only things I can shoot now is basically to uh, do a little overview of my Mora knives. Um, these are not my all Mora knives because living in two places at the same time, I live in Poland and in England uh, most of the time in England, but when I visit Poland, there is that's the greatest time I have outdoors, which means I have a lot of my knives in Poland, which saves a lot of time and trouble, means I don't have to travel with uh, bags full of knives, hatchets and uh, machetes. Uh, so we're missing some of them, but still we have most of the gang. Um, so uh, let me just start my overview from something that I've already reviewed uh, in one of the one of my videos which you can see here uh, on the screen um, so we have two versions of Mora Robust uh, the old version which is slightly modified uh, I mean rigged I suppose with the ferrocerium rod and uh, the paracord wrapped around the sheath and the new Mora which I reviewed and compared in the same video. So, oh, I can't even take the knife out with the sheath. But anyway, so you can see uh, these knives reviewed in the video that uh, you can see the link on the screen right now. You can see how I modified this knife because it wasn't up to my standards when, I, when it ca first came. So now it's much better. And as you notice watching that comparison, I mentioned that the sheath doesn't hold the knife in the sheath in it in itself properly. So by to in, increase friction, I added the hockey tape, but instead of ruining the looks of the knife and wrapping it around the handle, and I'm gonna cut myself shooting this video now. <laughs> I actually put this hockey tape inside the sheath so that it's virtually invisible, but it still does the job. So I think that's a cool li little trick. So yeah, you can see these knives reviewed. I'm not going to take much time talking about these. Nothing special, nothing new I can tell about them now and especially do with them at this stage. So let's move on to some of the more, more unusual Mora knives, like this one, Crooked Knife. Uh, spoon maker. This is just single edged Mora, as you can see. All these knives uh, with the wooden handles, and not just them, but mostly these, have the problems with uh, those gaps where the, where the blade enters the, the handle. So, uh, it's, I mean, it's a problem for me because. It, the water collects in there, everything collects in there, so I just don't like it and I usually just uh, basically fill the gaps with beeswax. You can also see this in the same video where I review these two knives. Okay, so another carver is the Mora, huh, let me think what it's called, I took the label off and I can't remember, this is either 106 or 121, so, ha, I can't remember. I'm, I'm gonna put this on the screen again because I'm terrible with names. So again, same story with the gaps and beeswax. This is uh, actually a different knife in, uh, in the sense that it's actually made of uh, a unique for my collection uh, type steel. This is uh, a laminated steel. And you can actually see, I, can't, I don't know if you, you'll be able to see this, but if we focus on the blade, on the bevel here, you may be able to see the border where two types of steel connect. There is like a very faint line running through here on the bevel. So basically there is the harder part, which is your edge, and the softer, more durable, which is the rest of the of the blade and this has been blued as you can see with birch wood cassie uh, which makes it stink and 
I wouldn't advise eating with use, using this knife for food preparation anymore. It, it smells a little dodgy. I don't know if it's uh, harmful or, or not, but uh, just in case. Uh, it looks nice and I'm using it mostly, well, I mean, sp basically exclusively for carving. So that's not a problem for me. As you can see, I also modified the sheath. I don't really like the way that these sheaths are made. So I just added a little leather loop so that I can attach it to my belt because even though this is a uh, carving knife, I still like to carve in the woods and have it on me. So, and I don't like to keep it in my backpack. Sometimes I just need to have it on me, as I say. So, and you may have noticed that this is also, this knife doesn't come with a sheath, but it has a sheath, which I have made, but that's nothing to brag about because it's made of is a... Is that a Lural holder? This is a toilet paper roll yeah. <laughs> and uh, duct tape, wrapped around with duct tape. I actually have a much nicer sheath uh, being made by myself, by me, at the moment, but it's not finished yet. I'm gonna shoot a video or maybe post a blog post on this because it looks amazingly much better than this. It's made out of uh, willow wood and uh, I'll show you and tell you all about this when it's done, but this is just for the time being, so I have a place to store this knife safely and securely. Okay, I so... It's very creative. <laughs> yeah, because it's a little difficult, it's tricky to, you know, put this knife in any sheath because it's not yeah. straight, so it's not gonna fit any sheath that you have, any regular sheath at least. So, for these knives, they have pretty much the same uh, type sheaths, which are for me are useless. I know that people in Sweden have special buttons to accommodate this thingy here. I just don't don't do it. So I basically generally just use these knives as neck knives, which they work really well. And I don't know, I, I, suspect, I suspect that even the Swedish people wouldn't be able to use this on the belt. I don't know what this is and how people would this isn't the original I modified this specifically for uh, neck carry because this is so soft this is basically as soft as this that's the same type and flimsy and I like to use my knives sing one-handed so I need to be able to pull my knife with one hand out of the sheath and with this being so soft it basically just bends and doesn't work all the time and it's not reliable so I put a piece of uh, bamboo here and uh, used some glue uh, epoxy and wrapped it around with some artificial sinew to stiffen this up. Now it's really nice and stiff and I can definitely use it with one hand. Release it with one hand. Every time and it doesn't bend, it's not flexible anymore. But the knife itself, I haven't shown you. This is actually a good opportunity for me to talk about differences and compare more a classic number one and number two. This is number one, this is number two. So this is the knife that stabbed me, well, I stabbed mm -hmm. myself with, and um, went like, <laughs> like my hand was a piece of butter. But anyway, uh, so this is much bigger, number two. Well, much. You can tell the difference. It is slightly bigger, it's the, the blade is wider, the blade is slightly longer as well. It feels um, stouter, I suppose. And the handle is thicker as well. You can definitely feel the difference when you hold the knife. It's, uh, yeah, it is thicker. But even though this one is much uh, thinner, it doesn't really bother me that much. What I love about these knives, why I bought the number two after number one, is this shape, which basically does not restrict your movement and doesn't, uh, doesn't actually dictate how you would like to hold your knife and doesn't make any type of grip uncomfortable because it just doesn't have anything that would get in your way there's no guard there's no nothing in on the butt of the knife so it's basically olive shaped um, handle that will hold comfortably in any possible position And of course, these knives, uh, the sheaths will actually work for either of the knife, although it's not ideal. As you can see, this actually sticks out quite a bit and it, the holding isn't as great. I mean, it does hold it, but I wouldn't trust it. 
so that's why I decided to modify this one instead of using just one for both knives. Okay, so let's move on to something a little bigger. Mora 731. A massive blade which I modified and again, as always, and uh, made a video on this as well, which you can see on the screen right now, the link to this video. Um, quite an unusual blade, very similar to uh, 7-Eleven, which is basically same handle, uh, same blade profile, although the blade is on steroids. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it's quite a bit longer. Really comfortable handles, really grippy as well, kind of soft rubber. And because of the thickness, it's really comfortable. I think it'd be good for uh, dressing game, skinning, things like this. I haven't actually done this with anything bigger than a chicken, but it feels like it'd be really, uh, it'd be working really well for that. Okay, so now we have something similar size as Mora Classic number one. Uh, sorry, it's just my hand. It's not at its 100% today. So this is a heavily modified Mora 511. As you can see, the guard has been cut off. It was getting in my way. So because of the guard being Without the guard, basically, the sheath doesn't hold the knife really well. So I had to wrap it around with uh, hockey tape to make it stable. The sheath is a little um, modified as well. I just uh, put a piece of leather here for stropping. It works pretty well. I mean, it means you have your honer on you all the time. The blade is actually... Oh, I have to take it out again. Damn it. <laughs> I forgot to mention that uh, the blade is actually almost identical as Mora Classic number one. The same blade profile and it's basically just stuck in a different handle. And I'm being a little cha chaotic now, but I want to go back to Mora Classics because of this little symbol which I haven't seen on any other Mora. I believe this is the old one from the times where Mora was still a separate company with Frost. I may be getting this wrong, but uh, it definitely looks different. And this is the symbol that I saw in Morse Kohansky's book called uh, Bushcraft. And I don't know if you can see in the Northern Bushcraft, the, the later ver version of that book, but so that's how I can tell he was using Mora Classic number two. Okay, so let's move on. Oh, damn, I keep hurting myself. <laughs> let's move on to Mora Companion Black. It's not the same as Mora Bushcraft Black. It's the regular Companion with the uh, stainless steel blade. The only difference is it's black. So I have the equivalent, the Mora Companion MG in carbon steel, the olive handle, olive green. Uh, but I have this one in Poland. And also I have the Mora uh, Companion Heavy Duty in olive green handle in Poland as well. So that's the two knives that we are missing here, plus another one of these, but that's just the same knife. So yeah, the thing, uh, one thing I have to tell, say about this knife is that I was really disappointed with the steel quality. I don't know if this is just this knife or um, stainless steel, this stainless steel in general, but it's really soft. It's, I mean, for me, it's uh, basically useless for carving wood, to be honest with you. So I had to like heavily convex this edge to make it usable. Um, I don't know what you think about this. Maybe it's not going to be a big of a, that big of a problem for most of you. But for me, I mean, it basically just, it didn't even chip or roll. It bent, kind of created a dent when I was carving a piece of green wood. So that kind of, 
I just didn't like this knife after all, after that. I mean, when that happened, it just tells me this, is, this isn't very good for carving wood if it bends, if the blade, the edge bends on a piece of green wood. And there is something unusual. You're not gonna lose this one. This one, yes, it's really, it stands out. I haven't used this for anything, to be honest, because I can't find any, any legitimate use for this knife. I just like the looks. <laughs> I just felt like I had to have this knife. So this is Mora uh, stainless steel, companion stainless, fully serrated. Well, maybe not fully, but it's uh, most of it. It's, it's serrated blade and the serration is pretty good, but I just, I'm not a big fan of serrated knives. I suppose it could be good for dressing large game, maybe for, I mean, I tried this uh, with fish, filleting fish and things like this, it wasn't really that good. So, I don't know, maybe on larger game when you have those n nice massive chunks of meat, um, you don't have to worry about your knife getting dull very soon. I, I really don't know, as an outdoor knife or a survival bushcraft knife, this is really useless if you ask me. I know, I know people like those, some people like those knives, this serrated blades. For me this is just something that I wanted to have because it looks cool. <laughs> yeah, I do that sometimes too. So, and another thing, another oddity, I suppose. Let me just struggle with it a little bit. Is this more a flex, flex knife or flex seat knife? I can't remember the name. But uh, it's in stainless again, the typical Mora stainless Sandvik, I think it's called. And the main difference is it's very flexible and very thin. And this is actually the best knife for filleting fish I've ever used. Some people may say, well, the blade isn't quite long enough, is not thin enough, as in narrow. It really doesn't matter to me. It really does does great job. The knife profile, the, the thickness of the blade, or rather thinness, I should say, <laughs> when you look at this, the sharpness. For fish, this is the best thing, and I actually use it, keep it, and use it in my kitchen. Primarily and pretty much exclusively. Nothing else, not much you could do with this knife, but I like to uh, gut fish, so I keep it. And this is one of those gimmicks that I wanted to have, but actually turned out to be useful. So maybe we'll find a use for this one. For this? Yeah, maybe someone can actually tell me what they think this could be useful for. And if you want to see me review some of those knives that I haven't reviewed already, please let me know in, in comments. And uh, you can also share your thoughts on some of the knives I've shown you today. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. Hope you liked it. This has been Simon, Simon's Discoveries. Uh, please make sure you click like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, share it with your friends. And uh, thanks a lot for, to those of you who have already subscribed. That's definitely helping and that's definitely made my day a few times when I had like 10 subscribers per day. That's something. So uh, I really appreciate your help and everything you've done for me so far. And uh, yeah, have fun, go out there and practice and see you next time.